Isn't it crazy that the summer is like quickly slipping away? It's like, wow, where did it go? Like we, we, were, we were so desperate for warm weather, and, uh, and well, we got a little bit of it, and then, and now it's like, we're like halfway through. Praise God. God is good, amen? Hey, on the back there as you come in, you see a little sign there about we're raising some funds for some of the things that we need to be doing in our church. We are completely... Uh, taking care of all of our rugs, all of our carpeting, cleaning, sanitizing, everything, deep cleaning, scrubbing, and so, uh, and then also, we've already uh, placed one water heater in downstairs here, uh, and so we got, and, and we still need to do one down at the youth center. I know that next week, half that board will be covered up. Okay, half that we just didn't get a chance to take care of that. Right now, there's really nothing on it, but when, when you come in next week, you'll see that, that we have reached at least a halfway point. Amen? Amen. And, and so, uh, God is good. The other half, well, it's just waiting for you to give it. Amen? Waiting for you to give it up. Amen? And so... Hey, I hope that you are planning to invite a friend to Friends Day or friends. We're going to be having uh, some, some little slips of paper for you next week. It's going to be, uh, you know, like maybe, uh, maybe a half sheet size. Maybe we'll get four on a sheet of just a simple invite. And we're going to put, put uh, about 10 of them in every bulletin, okay? We're going to slip them in a bulletin. And these are for you to take to your neighbors, okay? Just, just, just go to their house and knock on the door and say, hey, you know, you know, we're having a friend's day at our church, like to invite you. The worst that can happen is they slam the door in your face, okay? If they're not there, you can put it, you know, put it in their door. But we're going to give, you, give every, every person here next week at least 10 little invite little cards to Friends Day, okay? And so I know that, so, you know, some of you, maybe you live out in the boondocks, like the Miscanthes, you live at the end of the hollow there. So you may have to walk a ways to get to 10, the 10 people, but most of us, we got, we're inundated with people all around us, amen? And so it's going to be a great, great time. It's, uh, I know it seems like a very busy Sunday with baptism and and with Friends Day and so forth, but it's going to be a great day. What, what a day, what a, I think there's no better time to invite a friend when, when there's Baptism Sunday, amen? And there's, there's a few that have signed up. If you've never been baptized, please do, okay? If you like to talk to me after the morning service about that, I would be very, very happy to talk to you, amen? Praise God. God is good, amen? You know, I just feel that maybe we just need to, uh, can we just stand one more time and, and let's just pray for our church. Let's just pray for those that are home today that are, uh, you know, not feeling well. Those that are struggling with either, if it's COVID issues, of course, every time you hear somebody sneeze, oh, you got COVID or something like that today, we just seem to be, that's kind of the world that we live in today, but um, you know, it's like we, we don't catch a cold anymore. We don't get the flu anymore. We get COVID, <laughs> okay? And so, but um, let's just, but we know that there are those that are home today and that maybe are dealing with, with COVID. So we're not insensitive to that. We, we miss you and we wish that you were here with us this morning. But, and we know that there are also those that are staying home just a few more days just to make it safe so, because they don't want to come in and infect anyone, and, and praise God, that's good, amen? So, God is good. So, Lord, we just thank you for our church family, God, we thank you for those that are, that are here in the house of God today, Father, just pour out a blessing upon them, and Lord, we pray for those that are home today watching via through Facebook, and um, Lord God, we just pray your, your touch upon them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, all the symptoms, aches, and pains, coughs, fevers, congestion, Father, we just, Lord God, we just ask in the name yes. of Jesus that yes, these Lord. things be yes, gone Lord. right now. God, yes, we speak, Lord. God, we send your word to them, Lord, yes. and touch them, Lord. Encourage them. Father, we know that perhaps maybe there are many that are home that are discouraged. And this is a message that you really need to hear. And if you're kind of in that time of discouragement, in that time of struggling, in that time where you feel kind of dry and barren. Lord, Father, 
pour out a blessing upon them, God. Let them know, God, that you, you never leave us, God. You're always there. And we just ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen, amen. 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 You know, there's never a time, there's never a time in your life when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, there's never a time when the Holy Spirit is not doing something in you. Amen. That He's not doing something in your life. You know, even if you don't feel it, even though you don't see it, we kind of sang a little bit about that this morning, right? But I'm going to share with you some dear, dear verses that, uh, that have meant so much in my Christian life today, because I just sense in my, in my heart all week long, and that there are many that are perhaps just struggling a little bit in, in their walk with the Lord, kind of maybe wondering, uh, God, where are you? Um, you seem perhaps maybe distant in my life right now, or maybe I'm going through this difficult season, going through this this storm, going through maybe things with, with health or finances or family matters and, and that maybe you're just here and you're just discouraged and you know God I just want to remind you that God is at work in your life even though you don't, you don't feel it. In Philippians 2.13 and I love this verse for it is God who works in me for it is God who works in me and he's always, he is always working to do in his good pleasure, to do his will. You know, God doesn't give up on his kids, amen? He doesn't, you know, and if you feel like maybe God has given up on you, uh, I, I, I want to, I just want to tell you, you're just wrong. You're listening, you're listening to the lies of the devil who is trying to tell you that God gives up on us. He gives us three strikes and we're out and and so if you're just down and just down and you feel like you're out, well, it's not over yet. Amen? It's not over. Uh, in Romans 8, 29, I just, it says, for whom he foreknew. For whom he foreknew. See, he knew. He didn't predetermined that you would be a, a Christian. I don't believe in that, but I do believe that, that, he, that he knows everything, and he knew that you would one day give your life to Jesus. That you would give your life to Jesus, and that, and that, and that he is, you know, he is, that he knew you before you were formed. Do you know that, you, that God knew you before you were even formed in your mother's womb? And that, you know, that you're not an accident, that you're, you're here by divine design. And you might be wondering, well, what's going on? And even though you may feel that God is distant and that you may feel undeserving or even as a failure. Has anybody ever felt sometimes just as a failure as a Christian? You know, I just, you know, if I was to get graded on this, I would probably fail. But God never gives up. So I want to I share Philippians 1, 6. This is, this, I shared this before many, many years ago. Uh, not this message, but shared that this, this was, this has been my life verse for Gosh, longer than I want to think now, but almost 49 years, okay? All right, 40, almost 48, 49 years, and this has been my life verse. And I realize that the context of Philippians 1, 6, that Paul is writing to, to the Philippian church, and he's, he's writing to a church that is, that is struggling. He's writing to a people that are being persecuted for their faith, and, and he tells them, and he tells them this, but I believe that we can take this personally. And I've always taken, I believe that we need to take the, God, take the word of God personally. Amen? Yeah. That this is a word for you. And I love, listen to what it says, and being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work in you will complete it. See, he began a good work in you, being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work, he's not going to stop. 
He's not going to stop what he's doing. God's working even though you don't feel it, even though you don't see it, even though you don't feel sometimes he's far away. He is there and he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen to what the Message Bible says. For there never, there has never been the slightest doubt in, the, in my mind, and Paul now is writing to these Philippians, but let's take it to me, that, you know, that Paul had me in mind when he wrote this, that there's never been the slightest doubt of my mind that the God who started this great work in you will keep at it and will bring it to a flourishing finish. Hallelujah. Amen. On the day that Jesus Christ appears. You see, I've, I've, I've hung on to this promise through thick and thin. And I want to I share this with you this morning. I believe this is a verse that you can hang on if you're in that time right now where you're wondering in, about this work that God has begun in you. There has never been, there has never been a time that God has, God has quit on me. There may have been a time that I've quit on him, but there's never been a time that he's quit on me. So I want to share four things about this verse really quick this morning. Just four things, four things about this work. So if you're taking notes, write down these four things. Number one, I want you to take notice of the author of this work the author of this work. In Philippians 1, 6, which says, he who has been noticed in your Bible that he is capitalized. He is referring to what? He is referring to God. For God has begun a good work in you. You know, and you've heard this before. You know. Long before I ever sought Jesus, he was seeking me. You know, he was going, he was looking for me. And 1 John 4, 19 reminds us this, that we love him because he first loved us. See, the author of the one who was working in my life is God. It isn't, if it was up to me, I, I wouldn't have made it this far, but it's not up to me. Now, I know I got my part to do, but it is God who is working, and he's working in you this morning, even, even in areas that you may not even be aware of, things that he is preparing you for. He is working in you. In Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2, let me pull that. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run the race with endurance, the race that is set before us. But I want you to notice the next verse. Looking unto Jesus, yes. the author. <laughs> you know, it's, you know you, God shares in this faith with you. Do you understand this? You're not alone in this walk. And even sometimes we, you know, we, we feel like we're just trudging alone, but God is there. And he is the author. And he's the, and not only he's the one who began the work, he's, he's going to finish the work, my friend. If you're here this morning, he's, you know, God does not quit. What he starts, he finishes. And the work, and if you may be struggling this morning, you may be wondering, you know, I don't even know why I even try sometimes. Let me tell you, keep trying because God is working. Don't give up. He is committed to you. Do you know that he is more committed to you than you are to him? It's not all about your commitment to Jesus. Let me tell you, he is so far more committed to you than you will ever be to him. See, I'm, God's not the weak link. I'm the weak link in this. Amen? (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes I need to get on the back of Jesus. Matter of fact, that's probably the good place to stay, on the shoulders of Jesus as he carries us, as he carries us through these, these times that we're, that we're going through and that you might be going through this morning. I know there's some in our church that are just really discouraged. 
and wondering what this is all about. Wondering why is it so hard sometimes. God is at work in you. Even though you don't, you don't feel it, you don't know it sometimes, He is. He began something in you and he's, he's committed to bring it to an end. He's committed. He's committed to you, child of God, this morning. He's committed to you. He loves you more than you can imagine. He cares more than you can imagine. The second, the second part of this Second thing about this, the four things about God's work is that I want you to take notice of the nature of the work. Notice it says, for he who hath begun a good work. God doesn't do anything half. It's a good work that he's doing in you this morning. It is a good work. God's work is good. In Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts, the work that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. God's work is good in your life. Amen. Amen. It is good. The nature of God's work is, begins when he, first of all, he, he transforms these hearts, amen? And he just continues on and on, and the work that, the work that God is doing in your life, is, it's a good work. It really is. Number three, the purpose, the purpose of this work. In Ephesians 2, verse 10, this is another one of my favorite verses. I'm, I believe it's probably a favorite of yours too. For we are his workmanship for it is he who has begun a good work for it is he who is what now he is working it out he's adding each stroke to the canvas each paint each color each image he's filling in filling in a, a masterpiece for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk before, that we should walk, so that we should be walking in them. You see, man was created, you know, man was created to walk with God. Amen? Mark, you know that God created you to walk with him. It really has. It's a work, it's a good work. In Matthew 22, this is what Jesus speaks about, this, this good work when he talks about that we should just simply love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is, this is what God is doing. This is what God is preparing us for. When Jesus was getting ready to go back to heaven and when Jesus was speaking to his disciples in John 14 and he he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Can I just tell you this morning, that's what he's doing right now for each and every single one of us in this room. He is preparing a place for you. And the work that he begun in your life, he's going to finish it. He's going to complete it. Hallelujah. God is redeeming mankind. He's redeeming you the purpose of why we're here this morning is to, and to encourage and to, and to uplift. Amen. God is good. And lastly, I want to talk about the certainty of the work. I really want to talk about the certainty of being confident of this very thing. The work that God has begun in you, you can be sure that he is going to finish it. In Romans 8, I love these verses. We are, are we done with Romans yet, Falco? No, we're not done. Right? That's right. We're, we're only in chapter 11, right? Amen. But we're going to get done, and we're going to move to Corinthians, amen, in 2024. That doesn't have to be a prophecy now or anything like that. But uh, amen, if you're, it's a great Bible study. So, but listen to what, listen to these verses about the certainty of what, how, what God thinks about you this morning. 
the certainty of the work, that what he begun in you, he is going to complete. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, Amen. who can be against us? Even yourself. Can you put that? Because you're your worst enemy. <laughs> who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for all, for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? He's going to be there for you. He's going to, you know, he's working. He's moving, amen. He's healing. He's touching. Who, is, uh, who shall bring charge against God's elect? I'm thinking about Romans. Romans again. Romans 8 1 says, But there is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. Stop condemning yourself. Hallelujah. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, he is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Do you know that he's praying? He's praying for you right now. Those of you that are watching and that he is praying for you. Well, if we could just hear those prayers. Yes. Isn't it so encouraging sometimes when someone takes your hands and just prays for you? Aren't you just, doesn't that just encourage you sometimes? Just when someone just grabs your hands and just start praying for you and they tell you that, hey, it's going to be cool. It's going to be, God's, God's there. He's not, he hasn't abandoned you. He hasn't left you. He hasn't deserted you. He knows what you're going through. Hang in there. Hold on. And now just imagine what Jesus is praying for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. That he's praying for us when we're down and discouraged and wondering what's, what, what's all this stuff happening in my life? Why am my life falling apart? He's praying for you, my friend. It's Christ who died, and furthermore, he is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation, tribu the troubles that you're facing right now, shall that, can that separate you from God's love? That sickness that you're dealing with, shall distress the stress of life, the anxiety of life, the worries of life, all these things wear against us and begin to, to place doubts within our minds of the love of God that he has for us. What shall separate us? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, we know that there are those in our church right now that are going through tremendous financial problems. Let me tell you, God is there. He will help you. He will. He will not abandon you. So nakedness or peril or sword, and as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yet in all these things. You know, can I just say to you that if you're, if you're down right now, and if you just feel like you're out, if you feel like, if, if, if one of those things spoke to you famine, nakedness, peril, sword, distress, sickness, whatever. Let me just say you're in good company. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Because 
There's nothing that can separate you. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, or depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate you from the love of God. Hear me, child. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. There's only one thing that can do that, and that is you. Only you, not your situations, not your problems, not what's going on in your life, not that you don't, I don't even feel God, I don't even see God. Let me tell you, he's there, he is working, he has not left you. He is not abandoning you. Our God does not abandon people. There is nothing Get things separate us from the love of God. For I, he says, for the certainty of that what God has begun in your life. And you may be in that valley right now. But let me tell you, there's a mountain coming. Amen? There's an upward climb coming if you will just hang on to God. I don't know why I feel this way this morning, but my heart just breaks for some of the people in our church. And that, that God, somehow or another, will you just speak to them and let them yes, know, Lord. God, you're there. Yes. Yes. Even in that situation, you're there. Yes. Thank you. Hold on. If you hear my voice, and if, if that's you, I want you to contact me or contact my wife. Amen? Will you do that? If that's you this morning, if you're in that place, in that valley, in that place of, of ready to give up, you let us know. We'll do what we can. I know we can always pray. Amen. Some things we can't do. Some things only God can do. Some things, but there's some things that What was our verse that we talked about this morning? Philippians 1 6. Being confident of this very thing that he who hath begun a good work, my friend, listen to me. He's done a, he's, he started a good work yes. in you. Yes, thank you. He started a good work in you. He's going to finish it. He's going to finish it. He's going to pull you through. Amen. He's going to pull you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He doesn't, no one left behind. God doesn't leave anyone left behind. He doesn't leave his kids behind. He will, he is working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop. Even if, even, even if I have no conscious clue of, of what's going on in my life, he's working. In it. Will you stand with me? Come on, just stand with me. Just, just say that with me, even when I don't feel it. Come on, say that with me, even when I don't feel it. You're working. Even when I don't see it. You're working. You never stop. You never stop working. I want you to take the hand, the one next to you. I know that we're trying to be careful about contact, but if you feel comfortable enough to do that, just take or just put your hand on the shoulder of someone. Father God, this is just 
kind of a different morning that we're having today, and that's okay. Because God, I just, my heart just, just really breaks for your people this morning. And Father, I sense, God, that you're, that's your heart this morning too, God, that your heart just breaks for your people. So Father, if there's someone here this morning who has gone through that time, God, will you just wrap your arm around them, God? Maybe even the one that you're holding, the hand that you're holding with. You you know that you're not in this alone. God loves you. And he cares for you, child. He sees. He has not turned away from you. He has not turned his head from you. He is not. You may think that this morning that God has looked away from you. Maybe it's something you've done. Something you haven't been doing. Hallelujah. His, he's looking. If his eye is on the sparrow, come on. His eye is on you today. He loves you. He cares for you. So, Father, I ask you this morning, God, to touch every heart in this place. Touch every family, every family member of this church, God, Lord. Those that are in this building and those that are not in this building this morning, God. Those that are just going through a hard time, Lord. They feel like maybe they're in that desert. They feel alone. They feel, Lord, they may even feel deserted by you. But, God, let them know you'd never do that. God, you're working, you're working, you're working. The proof of that you're here this morning is God's working. The proof that you're in the house of God is enough for you to know that he is working. That you're watching this morning, that you're watching, that you've tuned in this morning. That's proof enough to know that he is working in your life. He is not finished. He's not finished. You may be in that tough time. You may be in that valley right now. But let me tell you, you hang on. Your deliverance is coming. It's coming. Hallelujah. I lift my eyes unto the Lord. With My help comes from him. And Lord, we just pray right now that in Jesus' name. Father, there's one particular person that is on my heart right now. Father, I just lift them up. No names. Lord, you know who they are. Hallelujah. Do you know somebody this morning? Do you know someone who is, who's just down, who's discouraged, who's frustrated, who's, who's maybe feels alone, abandoned? Do you know somebody? Do you, why don't you just lift them up right now? Come on, why don't you just pray for them? Hallelujah. Lord, let them know, God. Lord, they may be, Lord, they may be far away. They may be even next door. They may be even the, the one that I'm holding hands with. But God, it don't matter, God. Oh, Jesus, I lift that person up to you, God. Oh, God, let them know you're working, God. God, that the work that you've begun in them, God, you're going to complete it. You're going to, God, you're going to complete it, God. Hallelujah. No matter what the devil throws at us, God, no matter what the world throws at us, God, you're for us. Who can be against us? And so, Father, God, we just... We just want to just be enveloped by your love this morning. God, will you just reach down and just give us a big hug this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, just reach down to your church this morning, God, and just give your church a big hug. Hallelujah. You are our Abba Father. You are our Daddy, oh God. God, remind us, God, that you are our Daddy, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a Daddy who never leaves. Your daddy who never leaves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're always there. And so, Father God, I just, Lord, I just send this word. God, I release this word. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. To, and to those who need to hear. Maybe not everyone here needed to hear that. But I know there were some this morning who needed to be reminded about the love of yes. God. And he's working and he's moving and he yes. never stops. Yes. And he's never going to stop. Hallelujah. He's never going to stop. Hallelujah. And so, Father God, we thank you. We give you praise for all that you're going to do. 
and we just ask this in Jesus' name. And come on, all God's people said amen, 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 amen. Lord, thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Amen. Come on, child of God, know God is working in your life. Please, please, if you need to call us, call us, okay? Amen, amen. Lord bless you. Have a great week.